Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, welcome to Awesome Chat. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters here uh, to talk uh, tech and some of the awesome people, a lot of times in Pittsburgh, but sometimes outside. We got a really, really cool one today. We're going to be talking cameras. We're going to be talking live streaming with uh, with Max Hode in just a moment. But first, please go check out all the the, 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 the menagerie of interviews and, and shows and everything over at awesomecast.net. You can subscribe to this and others on iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Spreaker, YouTube, all the different places. And of course, the main show is streaming uh, as of this week, actually, on uh, riversedgepgh.com, our good friends over there up in the Millville area. Uh, so uh, this week, so this is a product that we talked about a few weeks ago uh, that, that I, I was excited about some of the uh, options with it. And, and it's funny what will happen on Twitter. Because uh, we like to talk about the things that that are exciting us on the show, and, uh, and 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 the thread goes, and the emails goes, and here I am with Max Hote, the founder of Livestream, before me. Thank you so much for joining me here uh, uh, on on the Google Hangouts. Thank you. Pleasure. Thanks for having me, Michael. Awesome. So uh, tell me, for, uh, well, of course, you know, Livestream. You guys, Livestream.com is is a, a pretty. Uh, pretty big as far as the live events. Um, it's 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 it seems to be like one of the, the predominant platforms out there for live streaming. And uh, you, you tell me about this uh, the MovieCam and how that kind of plays into things and and what's it about. So you know when we started, you know, live stream is a leading platform for anyone from organization to business to uh, to basically broadcast uh, their event. You know we have customers such as. Uh, uh, Tesla, which or even SpaceX, that are broadcasting product launch, event launch, and in many other categories. And uh, you know, every week, every month, we see more and more people that want to live stream events. They want to go beyond just a quick video from an iPhone for a few minutes. Um, they have an organization, a sport game, a conference. They want to broadcast the event, and um, you know, they usually reach out to us. And the answer to as to how to start live streaming an event reliably. It's always been very complicated, very technical, takes a long time to explain, and it's not very affordable. So really, Movi, which is uh, you know the camera we launched um, at CES on the 3rd of January for pre-order, um, Movi is really designed from all this experience. How can we help people capture events, uh, whether they are individuals that are trying to capture the, the children's game, for example, or a school play, or professionals that are, you know, launching a product or covering a, a conference, how can we help them do it at the quality they deserve, um, but very easily, very affordably, and very reliably? So Movi is all about everything we've learned about, you know, what what does the video stream, whether you record it or your live stream of an event, need to look like uh, to be compelling, to be reliable, and how do we give this? Uh, to anyone who is interested in doing it instead of uh, answering and explaining that you need to buy multiple cameras for thousands of dollars and video switches mm-hmm. and all these things that you know no one really understands uh, unless they really have to. I, I, I'm a part of that. Part of my, my business here is I, I've handled a few live stream events uh, for organizations here in, in mm-hmm. the Pittsburgh area. And, and, and it's always, you know, then I have these these lesser groups that don't have a couple you know, you know don't have a whole lot of money to sink into something like this like a live stream and and, and, and the technical know-how and and it's always like I, you, you don't really want to at that point if you can't do it the right way um mm-hmm. so so i i'm really interested in the technical specs of this um mm-hmm. so this this seems to be you know of course i'm used to going to the live shows you know even what we have here we have a live uh, wirecast set up um, and, and we're streaming out and capturing that, mm-hmm. uh, and, and have all that set up. And of course you guys have uh, live stream has these big, you know, high dollar setups that people can come in and you guys help them set up and everything. Um, movie has a different angle on it for, uh, how to so- shot selection live to a live stream kind of thing. Can you mm-hmm. tell me a little bit about that process and, and, and how that works kind of practically? So, you know, for us, it starts with the end result. You know, at the end, you know, if you produce a video of an event, it's for the viewers. It's for what you record and, and show later on, on YouTube. And so it's all about the production value and, and the end result. And so one way of doing it is exactly as you said, to, 
to get multiple camera to connect them together to a switcher and to produce it. But that, that's very complicated. What we realized is that with a single camera, which, uh, which today obviously we have uh, a 150 de- degree uh, glass lens, but behind it uh, we have one of the world's best uh, sensor from Sony, and it's a 4K sensor. And so if you combine the two, what you can do with Movi, you can put it on the stage, right in front of you, for example, for this show. Or if it's a, an event on a stage, a concert, you can put it right on the stage. Um, what you'll see is also Movi is small. It's very tiny. There's a black and a white version. And it usually stands, we recommend, on top of a microphone stand. What this does, it means you can have a camera right there in front of the action without disrupting the audience. You know, a typical camera is a tripod and the big camera on top and then, you know, has somebody behind it operating it. Movi is just right there sitting where the action is looking at what's happening with the 4K lens uh, and the 4K sensor. So what we realized that would allow us to do is that if somebody could then, you know, create virtual camera move on this super high resolution and stream at in HD, um, we could really create the impression that there are multiple physical camera and multiple physical camera operator uh, to the point that the viewers wouldn't see the difference. It looks like a multi-camera production, yet it's done just with an iPhone and with the movie camera. So of course it's from the same angle, but if you look actually at most, um, most uh, because it's just from a single camera, most multi-camera production, some are cross shot, but most of them actually the cameras are, you know, th- three, three out of four cameras are exactly the same position. Just one is a wide, one is a close up, and the other one is a close up of somebody. So of course we don't have the reverse shot or the side shot, but just with all of the nine angle that this provide, and it's not only, nine static angle, we have computer vision software in the app that allows you to track faces, track object. And so the, each of the nine virtual camera that is looking at this 4K sensor is actually uh, operated by the computer, by a computer vi- vision engine. So as a, as a producer owner, you can look at all these nine cameras and you can basically pick the one you want and cut between them. So mm-hmm. that's a straight cut, which again, normally with a single camera, you can't cut between a close-up and a wide angle. You need to zoom out and zoom in, and that, from a production value point of view, makes people, um, you know, kind of sick of watching videos where the, <laughs> you know, the person is like moving, zooming in and out. Right. So, so at the basic, you can just, you know, cut between different uh, areas of interest, different phase, different moment of action, or cut back to wide. And then, in addition, you can also do um, basically pans and slow zoom. And, you know, we've all seen different types, you know, zooming is not that complicated, but doing a very slow emotional zoom that finished perfectly in somebody's face or, or pans out perfectly beautifully and it's slow at the beginning and accelerate and slow at the end. Um, you can do all of that with Movi and the app. And, you know, back to the beginning of, of uh, this explanation, it's about the end result. And uh, most people don't even know how you create multi-camera production. They don't even know what it is, but they know what TV look like. Right. And they know what movies look like. So for us, the goal is not how it's done, is how we can enable more people to do it more affordably, more easily, without training, so that the end result looks as close as possible to what a multi-million dollar TV production would do. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I know from my experience that now I, I'm doing live switching um, um, both hardware mm-hmm. and, and, and software uh, mm-hmm. for, for pro wrestling, for, for, for live events, but thankfully a lot of the speaking events as well. Um, how responsive is it? Especially if I, it, it, let's, let's say, you know, uh, you know, you, you have uh, samples in here of like kind of a dance shows, concerts, you know, things mm-hmm. like that. Um, is this, something that I can maybe try to follow something like a pro wrestling event that's pretty quick, or is there a certain kind of speed I should really aim for? So, you know, we're making improvements all the time. The, mm-hmm. the decisions that you edit, um, is, a is the, the whole thing is about 500 milliseconds. So you see the video on your phone, uh, a few hundred milliseconds, you know, maybe when we ship, we'll be at 300 milliseconds or a third of a second behind the action. Right. right. And then when you make the cut or you make the zoom, these go pretty much instantly. So it's right. less than half a second. Most likely will be a quarter of a second of what, what is called in the industry latency between what you see and, and, and what you've instructed the, the virtual cameras to do. Um, you know, it's not perfect as if you could have a $5 million truck and a full team. <laughs> you probably would want to use that. Um, and, you know, and you wouldn't replace it all with a movie. But if you don't have that, it's going to be a lot better than what you would do with a static camera. 
Right. And it's going to be actually pretty close. I mean, we, we're doing a lot of, uh, you know, follow and testing with sport and with conference and mm-hmm. so on. And, and um, you know, it, it, it's pretty amazing how close you, you can get. Right, right. Well, we also have the, the automated computer vision layer. You know, manually you can track somebody by using your finger. Um, but we also have the face recognition and you can, you can attach a tracker on somebody. So if the, if the software doesn't recognize a face, but there's an object you want to track with a cameraman, you can just hold and press. Now, this engine right now, you know, if somebody is walking on stage, it's working great. Somebody is running a little bit, it's working, you know, pretty good. Uh, but we expect by the time we ship uh, in April to actually, you know, be, be in a really good place uh, with all on-stage movement and some sport. And all of these improvements come actually to app updates, which provide updates to the firmware. So we, we're only scratching the surface of what Movi is going to be able to do in one year. And obviously all the customers are getting all the updates uh, as we go. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, so, so eventually, I can let all my videographers go and just do this myself, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's all about what you know. I, I think the way we look at it is that if you if you can afford, you know, it's not about just the equipment, right? right. If you have a venue and you want to do a three camera shoot, uh, or even what you're doing today, which you know, it's great. You've got picture in pictures, graphics, and mm-hmm. a few camera. And you're switching it all yourself. But if you think about the event use case in the venue, you know, you, you need three cameras, at least two cameramen and one wide shot. You need right. somebody to be switching. That's like three people that need to be there trained that actually are, you know, disrupting the, uh, the look of the event because cameraman needs to have positions and, and, and so on. And it's a lot of equipment. And so if your business model, if you're, you know, making events for television and it can afford that and you can pay for, you know, all of this, uh, all of these people and all of this equipment. I mean, we, we don't think you're going to throw it away and, no, and replace no. it with Movi. But the market is not about, you know, people that are already successfully doing live TV production. It's about the millions of other people that wish they could capture beyond the iPhone, right? Not just capture five, ten minutes and then your hand is holding there or not just use an old school camcorder and zoom in and out. You know, they wish they could capture the birthday of their kid, opening the present during the holidays or, you know, something at school or something professional or, you know, a music band. They wish they could really get that two-hour video. They wish they could record it. They wish they could stream it. Um, but there's really nothing out there that 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 gets you close to this multi-camera production. Um, and so this, this is what we design it for, the people that don't have access to this technology. Mm-hmm. Now, people that have access they might actually use it to supplement. You know, it's a pretty in- inexpensive network camera that if you have a few physical camera and cameraman, you can add a few on stage. And uh, our version of Wirecast, the live stream studio, you know, we have a product that um, does this, uh, this mixing, um, can actually ingest these movie camera in addition to SDI camera and HDMI camera into the, the mix. They can uh, resync it so there's no out of sync um, uh, point of view with, with speech and then stream it or record it. So, um, so the, the people that are already doing, you know, more professional, more grown up production um, also see a use for Movi, comp- you know, as a complimentary thing instead of just, you know, starting again over from scratch. You, you answered one of my questions about the future that, that it, it'll actually go into a system. So this can be actually say I was doing a wrestling promotion I, and, or something and, and, and I had the people down at ringside because I want that angle too, right? But mm-hmm. then I don't need the person sitting up there following with a camera and, you know, maybe we don't got the greatest tripod. So I can I can have somebody sit there and actually just follow with the movie app in a, in a, in a way and, and, and supplement a little bit instead of having maybe two hard cams, right? Exactly. Uh, close and so, and if it's a you know if it's a very uh, high end production with a lot of at stake, you're going to use wide traditional camera and a mixer. But then yeah. for these angles, you know that that you you basically didn't have any content or the budget couldn't accommodate, you can use Movi. And as you said, what's great is that you know you would put just the Movi in front of them. You could put it on the desk. There is actually a slant uh, that allows it oh. to be not looking just at the, the the table, but looking at the people. Or you can put it on a microphone stand, and uh, and remotely at the back of the house, you can be doing a slow zoom on a face or cutting from one person to the other and mixing that in into your outside mix. So that wow. that's for the higher end customers. That's something that uh, when we ship in April will be uh, active and ready. 
So uh, now, and of course, this is something that this is by live stream. So obviously, the ideal is they are going through your service and, and taking advantage of the features mm-hmm. of what you guys offer over there at livestream.com. Um, but and, and we, we you talked a little bit about kind of the switch capabilities, and, and I noticed some some stuff in here about you know uh, uh, one version that comes with an SD card and everything. What is um, aside from live? You know, is this something that I could see using as just a capturing the moments not necessarily pushing it out what are the kind of the the post editing options what do i get out of that can you tell me a little bit about that so you know one of the main reason the camera is called movie not not the live stream camera right is that you know the the capabilities of live editing are as great for live video as they are for recorded video you know we've heard so many people at have events they're not yet ready to live stream now that's changing very quickly like more and more people oh, yeah. are, are, are drawn to live streaming but they're more focused on recording at this point, and they don't want to edit after. They don't want to spend the hours editing, you know, a baseball game or editing a conference. And so this is really great if you if you are interested in go beyond a, a static wide shot from a GoPro or you know video of somebody zooming in and out. And you what you want is something a little bit more produced, but you still want it recorded. We realize that Movie is the perfect tool. And you don't need to then spend five hours um, editing later on a big computer or some 4K footage to do this type of effect. Um, in terms of your second question about post-editing, um, the, the, the magic of movies, we are getting the 4K uncompressed raw, you know, you're familiar with raw with photos, right? Raw data, it's multiple gigabits, multiple thousands of megabits of data. And this is where we are doing the virtual camera move and the cropping to, to, to do that. Um, we decided with uh, actually a very popular request not to allow um, post-recording editing. You know, we could let uh, our users record the 4K footage um, uh, in H.264 and then provide a tool to edit after. And the problem is that, you know, no camera, or unless you, you buy a camera from Red or something uh, very, very expensive, but no consumer or prosumer camera allows recording of raw and and even if it did it would be so big of a file that you wouldn't even know what to do with it so right. um, to match the quality of movie that it does live you would need access to the raw video mm-hmm. and um and and since we can't achieve that we didn't want to allow a lower quality experience uh using uh h264 MP, mp4 after so this is why the the editing is live only uh, at this point. It's, it's because of that. And it's very. It, it sounds like if you're adding the extra features, it would kind of muddy the features that you are doing very well with this. Yes, it's it's also why we on day one are not even supporting uh, multiple movies at a time because it takes a little bit of time for people to look mm-hmm. at the the video and the end result and to realize that it's made just from one camera. Right. You know, we've had many people telling us, oh, okay, so I need to buy three cameras. That that's kind of gets expensive and, and, and took us a while to say, no, 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 this is all done with one movie. That's it. Your iPhone, <laughs> one movie, and it's, and it's all there. Um, so that, that's also a reason why we didn't you know, support out of the gate multiple movie mixing, which is something we also have on the roadmap and, and, and that professional customers can do with Livestream Studio, uh, but we hope to also enable it uh, for just the app users uh, without another computer. Right, and to clarify, it sounds like uh, while it's capturing in 4K overall, like it's not actually broadcasting in 4K, like because you're you're giving yourself room for those angles, right? Yes. Uh, what is, is are we talking when it's when it's broadcasting? Is it 10, 1080, 720? Um, because right now it's 720p up to five megabits mm-hmm. uh, in 30 frames per second, which is great. Um, which is great for streaming. It's great HD. Actually, if you you know 1080p. Um, create some issue with playback on some computers mm-hmm. so uh, so we don't we at live stream on the platform we don't yet recommend it yeah um, and there might be software upgrade um, you know through firmware that that maybe improve that but right now it's 4k sensor 4k lens 720p up to uh, actually up to five megabits for streaming mm-hmm. and up to 20 megabits for recording that's good um, so if you want a higher quality master to edit and you're not streaming uh, you can record on the, uh, there is actually a 16 gigabyte uh, SD card that fits right mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's included with the Mobi. So when you order a Mobi, you also get the SD card uh, and you can record many hours of content uh, there. 
That's awesome. So, um, and kind of to clarify for those that maybe aren't, you know, uh, again, guys, you're, you're, you're kind of uh, uh, focusing on. So 4K is, well, I know 4K is what, 4 times 1080, which is like the most of the HD TVs these days. And 720, yeah. so that's why when we see the image and, and if you're watching the video or seeing the website, like there's actually like, like uh, what, nine uh, uh, spots on there so you can actually get what what probably like a, I don't even know what the fraction is but like a small fraction of the th- of the 4k image and it looks fine it's still 720 at least right exactly so that's the, and that's also why we're doing it in the sensor before compression so we are you know we are <coughs> literally the sensor is much more resolution than the stream needs so we're just moving the piece we take out of the sensor and only using the full sensor when you're doing a wide angle or when you're looking at, you know, on the phone, you can always see the whole picture, right? So even though you might zoom into somebody or a face, the, the, the owner of the movie can see the full picture at any point in time. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and we also allow, we're debating how far we let the zoom go because uh, theoretically we can do infinite zoom. Uh, but obviously, if as we go beyond, the physical resolution of 720p on 4K it starts to get a bit uh, noisy and so on. So we, we're debating whether we will actually let people zoom, do extreme zoom that might be a bit more blurry. Uh, but the, and, and we'll decide that obviously before we ship. Some people are asking us what's the zoom ratio. We'll answer that then. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, the, the, the point there is that there's also capabilities to go into digital zoom beyond the native resolution and, and we'll see how, how much of that we will enable that's right it can get a little junky when you start getting into that digital thing you ever uh, mm-hmm. uh do the pinch the zoom on your iphone all the yeah. way across the room and you start seeing the wavies you know yep. so i mean there's 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 trade-offs when you do something like that um I had a yeah, question the, the, oh. the point is that what we've realized we have this interesting analogy which is uh imagine you could watch the super bowl in uh a, you know a 4k camera locked and a wide angle and there is no movement no zooming no storytelling or and this is like beautiful 4k pixel at home but it's just static right there or you could watch it in uh in black and white from the 1950s uh, television resolution right <laughs> and so what we believe is most sport fan will will pick the black and white with the storytelling the multiple camera angle the the emotional zoom and all of that and the replays uh, beyond pixel, and so we the the whole idea behind movies, you know, we think that storytelling and focusing where the audience should tell and, and doing emotional and, and interesting camera move, such as in television and movie, is actually more important than even a little bit of noise is is even fine. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we'll see how users will use it. So obviously up to 720p, you you can't tell the difference, and then beyond, some some people will go beyond, but, but we think it's just the storytelling aspect will uh, will will make the user, the viewers forgive maybe some of the artifacts. Uh, so our, our co-host, uh, uh, Katie, at Kdutters on the Twitter, uh, uh, sent some questions in when, when, when we, we, we booked this. And she's looking at it, and she's excited about this as well. And mm-hmm. she's looking at the, the, the footage of the concert footage that in, in the sample video that's on your mm-hmm. website, which is getmovie.com, by the way. Uh, and, 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 and she's famously... Uh, um, taken a lot of kind of in the crowd concert footage and uh mm-hmm. and of course you know this is a conversation with cameras on cell phones and everything and being kind of a uh, uh all around cheaper device you know when we're talking about the bigger cameras how does this uh do in those uh low light situations and i know concerts I, i've done things with the lights kind of you know flashing all over the place and going in and out uh you know are, are, are those the situations that this this will work well with is there an autofocus on it that can maybe go wacky or you know how, how does it do in kind of those sorts of situations so the you know if you you know the the recommended use for a concert is by the concert owner to put it on the stage um <laughs> so so, so, so no thing- no movie in the mosh pit i got you I no, we, we actually would love that to happen, <laughs> but it's not the primary. And and we we're getting surprised with the success of our pre-order, how much how much uh, how much broader the use case and the interest seem to be. But if you go back to the the primary design is how do you put a camera if you're the band or the venue owner, and how do you put it right on the stage? Um, so we've done many tests, and the uh, you know we have you know for this type of camera, for this size of camera, uh, the best sensor available. Um, and you know, it performs, you know, it doesn't perform as well as a 50 or $20,000 camera, three CCD and all of that, 
but it performed very well. And one of the reasons why it does is not only the quality of the sensor, but the fact that it's close to the action, right? We are not back 20 feet or 40 feet with uh, trying to zoom with a consumer camera or an iPhone. We are right there. Movie is right there in front of the action. So that, that's one of the first reasons. And obviously, quick light movement and so on, we have really rapid and great auto exposure, auto white balance. Um, and we, we've seen some really great results. Again, you know, if you if you can have the hundred thousand dollar setup, you're going to produce a, a better video. Uh, but 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 with Movi, you're definitely going to produce something hundred times better than than a shaky iPhone uh, in the, in the crowd or even uh, awkwardly positioned on stage um, or or with a, a GoPro or anything like that. You know, it mm-hmm. definitely takes you to the next level, um, not necessarily to the full uh, broadcast setup uh, with the truck. Okay. Okay. So, 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 think twice before I get my mosh pit movie going on there. <laughs> no, we'd, uh, we'd love you to try it. So yeah, but but sure. maybe, maybe if we can get some kind of uh, cover for for an insane clown posse concert where they're throwing a soda and. Uh, <laughs> well, it's actually, uh, it's actually with the other adapter. It's waterproof. Oh. Um, uh, for for rainproof, uh, and the only reason the camera on its own is not is because of the SD card insert. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, but basically, you you'd be surprised. You can actually probably tilt. Uh, when it's on top of the boost adapter, uh, you can definitely tilt water on it and so on. And, uh, and I'm sure it will resist uh, the, odd, the odd soda spill in the, in the mash pit. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. <laughs> I, hey, it's been really great talking to you. Like I said, I've had so many questions, and, I, and, and my mind is just teeming with all the possibilities. And, and I want to ask you what I, – I don't know. I don't know. You, th- you mentioned the roadmap briefly, and I know you, you can't tell us too much about the future of this. The thing isn't even released yet. Uh, mm-hmm. until April, and it's now end of January as we record this. Uh, but uh, what is the future of this this camera, this technology? Where do you hope to go with this? I mean, the, the most exciting piece, you know, everything about the hardware is about creating the first camera designed for events. So the, the first side of the roadmap is accessories that are not, not for action sport, not for security, right? You know there's other cameras, specialty camera out there. But accessories, everything about events. And so that's one of the elements is that the first accessory is a 10-hour battery pack that can also be outdoor in the rain. But we have many more accessories coming out, which, which if you have a use case of an event, you know, are going to make a lot of sense. Um, the second piece, which is really the, the layer we've only started scratching the surface, is intelligent editing, live editing. And so when movie ships, all of our customers will have access to face recognition, object recognition, to some basic automated mixing. But where we think we can take it is to actually allow the automation of choosing what, who is speaking, the wide shot, you know, all the creative decisions that a director would do. We are basically building it in software so that eventually when you leave Movi on its own with the app running, we hope that our computer vision and our software and our artificial intelligence can basically create a better video than, than anyone could. So that, that's where th- this will come as software update. The hardware is all capable of doing it. And the first version, uh, we think, is, has never been done before. It will be pretty unique. Um, but when it gets really exciting for all of us is when, when it's better than what, what, what somebody could do by, by playing director. And that's when also it means that you can go in the action, if whether you're a family using Movi or you a event owner or a band owner capturing an event, you know, wouldn't be great if you put the camera and you don't even have to mix and edit with the phone, but at the end you have a, a video that's fully edited and, and really great. That, that's where we're going, and that's where a lot of the innovation this year for this model uh, will come awesome. in software. Awesome. It sounds great. I love the Any idea to, to lower that barrier that more people can create? Right, and because mm-hmm. uh, it's definitely definitely a lot to get to what what it looks like. This is trying to accomplish. Thank you so much, uh, Max Hoth, co-founder of uh, Livestream, Livestream.com. Go check out everything going on over there, and of course, GetMovie.com is uh, where you can find more information about the camera. Um, any, any, anything else you want to put out there uh, uh, while we're we're kind of leading up to anything else going on at Livestream? You want to uh, give a shout out for or anything else? Well, that's a lot. So uh, you know, as you said, <laughs> it's available. Beautiful LED light mm-hmm. uh, on getmovie.com. We have a limited uh, discount right now at uh, save a hundred dollar, and it'll be shipping. And uh, we it was shipping in April if you ordered earlier, but it will be shipping in May uh, since we sold out of the first batch from our manufacturer oh, wow. uh, that we will ship in April. So, um, so getmovie.com if you're interested, and uh, obviously also we 
we are there on our social network answering any question if uh, if uh, if any of your viewers have any other questions oh i'm sure they will we got a, a great reaction off of even when we were just talking about it on the show as well uh so go check it out thank you so much for joining us if you have any questions you have anybody we think we should talk to or about on the awesome cast here on the awesome chat interview show please let us know awesomecast.net awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com awesomecast on the twitters facebook and uh and uh well, yeah, sometimes google plus as well i guess uh go subscribe to the shows over at awesomecast.net check out our back catalog and thank you so much thank you to our awesome guest max you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com